today's episode of Funker Tactical, we're here with Sean Tyler from Raging Tiger Martial Arts. Sean, what are we doing here today? Well, Ryan, what we're going to do here today is a five-part DVD series on the Fox 9 Carambit. We're going to show you why this is the Carambit for you and why you want to have this weapon. This knife is the only knife that Funker Tactical officially endorses. Sean, tell them why. The main feature about this is Fox 9 is the only other company to, to have the patent on the Emerson Wave feature, which means you can draw this knife just like that at will. This sets this above any other knife for combat capabilities. All right, let's get started. For this DVD series, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore the acceleration of aggression when it comes to a combat situation using the knife. From verbally trying to decelerate the situation so there is no conflict, to the actual deployment and of the knife so that you're discouraging the person from attacking you, to coming into your cuts, starting with maybe small lash races to the wrist, try to get them back off to kill shots. All right, so the most common grip for the Karambit is this reverse grip right here. Basically, uh, I'm gonna put my, uh, my index finger right in the loop. So you can see that the, the knife fits nicely around this. The advantage to having um, this kind of grip is the amount of torque you get from your body, you'll get max, maximum torque with this blade. When you draw it from the hip, you keep your elbow right along against your body, and right there you get a nice plowing motion. It'll plow right through anything you put it up against. When I flip the carabit up in this side, basically what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna put my pinky finger in through here. Once again, because of this, uh, this blade is ergonomically sound, fits into the fingers, the thumb's got nice support here. Very sturdy grip, right? And this uh, particular grip, the advantage to holding it this way is just the speed that you can get with the knife, right? You can go super fast. The last and final grip that you don't see too often is uh, basically this, uh, this talon grip. And basically what this one's used for is for hooking and he throws a punch here, right? You come through here, I can bite right through. You kind of grab the guy by his clavicle here, you can pull him along. You can get all sorts of features where you're just flying thing gives you an extra little grip. So if you grab my shirt here, right? Come here and just kind of bite in, right? Grab, pull, pull, pull. The absolute best thing about this knife is how quickly it deploys. With this Emerson Wave feature, it's deployed on demand. I don't have it set up right now, but it actually has the a uh, feature so you can put the clip on either side so that it's able to stay in your pocket, it's not going to fall to the bottom so you can deploy it easier. But uh, right now it's sticking in my left pocket. You keep the ring out, you loop the ring through your index finger. As you're reaching forward with the knife, it deploys automatically which is really nice because you don't have to worry about having two hands for deployment. It's a lot faster than having to open it up uh, with both hands. So that's what I learned on my own proper drawing of this knife. The next step from there, Sean's gonna talk about. Okay, so most people, once you buy a camera bit, everybody's gonna wanna start flipping it. But what you don't wanna have happen is you don't wanna flip it so that the blade hits you in the wrist, right? Uh, if you are if you don't only bought a real camera bit, I recommend a trainer because it's very easy to stab yourself with these if you don't know what you're doing. So get a trainer so that this is not an issue, right? But if you have the rear carom bit, then you have to be extremely careful. And basically, you want to hold the carom bit like so. So you see how you have this knuckle here? You want the ring just on the outside of that knuckle like so. So then when you flip it, see it's going to come right back into the palm of your hand and you're not stabbing yourself with the carom bit. So I think it's very important to learn how do you do that first because that's probably the most dangerous and probably the most addictive thing about playing with this knife is this flipping and whipping motion. You want to keep on drawing from the same spot consistently. So when you need it, it's going to deploy it low. You don't want to be in a panic situation where you, you try to, okay, on Tuesdays, I deploy it on my backside, on Wednesdays, it's in my pocket. If you're going to practice with a knife and you want to use it defensively, then you always want to have it in the same spot. So as soon as you're ready to draw it, it's there, and your body's just used to going that over repetition, repetition. It's always in the spot, so you always have that security that you can use it at will. 
So, same thing, military law enforcement, you're always gonna have your magazines, you're always gonna have your pistol in the same spot, so if you ever need it, you know exactly where it is, and you're not thinking about where you have to reach for it, where you kept your magazine that day, shit, is it in my back, or is it where I keep it all the time? Most attacks or assaults, um, it's gonna be a surprise attack. So you're walking to the park at night, somebody jumps up through the bushes, right? You don't necessarily have time to deploy your knife, flick it out like this, and then use it, right? It's too late. Those vital seconds can mean the difference between saving your life and being overwhelmed by an attacker. So with the Emerson Wave feature, as soon as that happens, if I'm used to using it, see, it just deploys at will. There you go. Yeah, it's super quick. You don't even have to think about it. Once you've practiced it enough times, you have the muscle memory down, you don't even have to think about it. You just grab your knife, go, and it's ready for fight. I just got this knife about eight o'clock last night. I've been practicing with it a couple hours today. Practiced with it a little bit last night before going to bed. Uh, we were having little trainer knife fights. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Nice thing about the trainer knives, you're not gonna have to worry about hurting your friends when you guys are training. Training knives are definitely beneficial. I didn't even know these really existed for the camera bits. Uh, I'm really happy I got this as well as the, the actual blade. Another great thing about the Fox Carambit is the way they designed the ring. This ring is super smooth. So when you're using the Carambit, one of the common features is the extended grip. So when I flip it out like this, and I start twirling and whipping the knife, it's amazing. It just, it's so smooth, it doesn't catch in your fingers, it glides across, and it makes for perfect use of these particular techniques. This knife was manufactured by Master Craftsmen in Italy. They make some of the best knives in the world. Fox knives is top notch. The, uh, the Italian Special Forces, this is the knife that they use and they specifically asked Fox to manufacture this for their purposes. So if Ryan keeps on coming at me, the first thing I want to do is I want to zone away, right? He extends his reach and I want to pick, right? So I'm going to pick at him. Right, like this, just stab me on his hand, his forearm, right? And I want to work on picking the limbs to stop him from his aggression. All right, so even with the trainer knife, dull blade, you definitely feel uh, a good amount of pressure on your arm. You're not even gonna want to get punched or uh, stabbed with one of these or picking as he called it. So uh, what happens with real flesh on a real blade? Well, let's go and look at that. Uh, my arm's sore, I guess, just from the surgery. So this is like a knife training thing. It's basically just some uh, rigid... It's a Lameco forearm guard. So we use this a lot for knife training, just so that we don't damage and beat up the guy's forearms or whatnot. Um, you can get these from uh, Brew Dan and Asanto's website, and Asanto.com. They sell a lot of Lameco products. Uh, excellent training tool for practice with the camera bit. Alright, so we got some pigskin here on a stick because I'm not volunteering my own arms for this. Basically, you're gonna see what kind of damage the Carambit knife can do to an arm during picking because I guarantee after you get picked once or twice, you're not coming back at this guy. Don't try this at home with your kids or wife because we are trained professionals and we're making sure that nobody's gonna get hurt. We have a medic on scene from what I hear. <laughs> Alright, what's happening, John? All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna simulate an attacker's limb, so their hand, but we're not coming out to punch you or strike you or grab you. I'm gonna deploy the weapon, and as the hand comes in, what I wanna do is I'm gonna work my picks and my slashes on that way. All right. Okay. Do you want me to start further back, come at you so you have time to deploy it? Yeah. Like I could start back here and then, cause like that's not a lot of space, right, for you to draw. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, okay. So just, just come in, all right? Watch so Full that, speed? We'll just do a, we'll just do, let's do a practice one. Oh, okay. you don't want to do, a, do too overwhelming, right? Yeah. Just, just, just stick it out, right? Like that. And then I'm just going to bam. See? Like this. And then just. Okay. Okay. I'll be going dead center for your face. Okay. 
Whenever you're ready. I can't clap. All right, let's go. All right. Hold on, let's, let's all take a step back. Four, four, four. There you go. Okay. So here we go. Ryan's gonna attack me with the, the pork stick. I'm gonna show you what we can do to somebody's forearm with the camera bit if they try to reach out and grab me. All right, let's go. Or strike. Spit. Come in. Come in. That's it. There we go. Ready? Okay, so as you can see, there are some pretty bad slashes in this pork. Uh, it's cut right down to the to the uh, meat. You can see a couple stab wounds there. I guarantee, uh, if this was my arm, I wouldn't be uh, bothering with this guy. I'm gonna go rob an old lady instead. Yeah, the, the lacerations are pretty deep, like that. That's that's a pretty significant gash there. I'm sure if uh, any assailant coming in suffering these kind of wounds. Uh, they're gonna think twice about messing with you any further. That's almost right down to the bone here. The steel's just a couple millimeters below my finger here. Uh, that's a very, very deep gash. With a gash like this, uh, would the assailant actually go into shock from wounds as deep in their form? It depends. Um, a wound like this isn't necessarily gonna kill somebody, but I mean, if you see a big hole in your arm like that, after about two seconds of being in a fight, Chances are that fight's pretty well over already. Um, person may may not go into shock. I mean, you're not gonna necessarily hit an artery, especially on the top of the arm. But uh, there's definitely gonna be a lot of blood involved, and uh, I don't know. I'm glad it's not my arm. On episode two, we're gonna look at the camera, which is an everyday carrying tool uh, for general applications that you may use for fishing or hunting or cutting rope or boxes, just generally use and purpose of the camera bit. For episode three, we're gonna look at the camera bit for law enforcement and military applications. For episode four, we're gonna look at self-defense applications. And for episode five, we're gonna focus on absolute kill shots. So you don't wanna miss an episode of this Funker Tactical Exclusive. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to use the camera as an everyday utility knife. 